the sea can be a dangerous place. Even with modern ships and modern technology, disasters can still happen. Collision, fire, and foundering can all lead to abandonment. When human lives are at risk, all seafarers owe it to themselves and their colleagues to understand their responsibilities. This series has been produced to supplement your ship's personal survival manuals, including the SOLAS Chapter 3 training manual and STCW requirements. This video looks at enclosed lifeboats, freefall lifeboats, and rescue boats. In totally enclosed lifeboats, the coxswain has a control position. The boat is steered and the safety systems are operated from here. On some cargo ships, these lifeboats need to be lowered to the embarkation deck. But most totally enclosed lifeboats are boarded and launched from the stowed position. With all types of boat, once the crew have been mustered, the bridge is informed. With this lifeboat, the gripes are removed. The lifeboat is then boarded. The bottom plug set and the painter passed out of the forward hatch and secured. As the ship is in port, the harbour pins are removed and the boat is then lowered to the boarding position. Once the order is received, the lifeboat is boarded. Occupants need to be directed to their seats. They must be spread out evenly, starting with positions away from the doors. They must sit down and strap themselves in. As they enter, designated crew members bring with them the satellite EPIRB, the radar transponder, and if there's time, extra water. Once everyone is on board, the doors and hatches are battened down. Life jackets need to be worn by all occupants. The coxswain then straps himself in and starts the engine. This boat is lowered from on board the ship. Many totally enclosed lifeboats are lowered from inside the lifeboat. The coxswain pulls on the self-lowering cable. This cable is pulled down until it can be pulled no further. An automatic brake on the ship controls the maximum speed of descent. The descent can be stopped by completely releasing the tension on the cable. The release mechanisms on these lifeboats can operate both on load, when the hooks are supporting the weight of the lifeboat, and off load, when the lifeboat is in the water and there is no load on the hooks. There are advantages in being able to release the lifeboat both off and on load, especially in bad weather. But all on-load release systems must have built-in safeguards against early release. In this release gear, both falls are connected to pivoted hooks fitted to the lifeboat. The hooks are held in place by a cam that presses against the lower front corner of the hook. When this cam is turned by operating the release handle, 
the hook swings around its pivot. The mechanical arrangements ensure that both cams turn and both hooks swing at the same time, so both falls are released at the same time. There are other systems. One is called the open top cone system. Again, the mechanical arrangements ensure that both falls are released together. Check your lifeboat manuals to see which type is fitted to your lifeboats. A further safeguard is the hydrostatic interlock in the keel. This prevents release until the keel is under water. There is an override mechanism. This must only be activated by the coxswain. In heavy seas, the coxswain should either use the onload release method, stopping descent when the boat is one meter above the water and then releasing it, or use the offload release method by timing the descent so the boat enters in the trough of a wave. The coxswain pulls out the safety pin. When the lifeboat enters the water, the weight comes off the falls. The coxswain pulls back the release handle. This turns the cams, which release the hooks. The falls disconnect, and the lifeboat is now under its own power and the control of the coxswain. Different lifeboats have different systems. Make sure that you are familiar with the system on your lifeboats. As soon as the engine is running, and the falls have been released, the painter is released. Like other essential operations, this must be possible from inside the lifeboat. If seasick pills haven't been handed out before, the coxswain orders them to be given out now. Good leadership is important in emergencies, and the coxswain must put himself in charge of the evacuees. Steering will be largely done by compass. The buoyancy of totally enclosed lifeboats means that they're not easy to handle. Regular training is vital for their coxswains. Once the lifeboat is in the water, the coxswain should steer to a safe distance from the abandoned ship, taking into account all prevailing circumstances. This is probably upwind and clear of the bow and stern. The occupants of the lifeboat must always stay sitting down and strapped in. These boats are self-righting, but only if everyone is strapped in. The engines are designed so that they will still function should the lifeboat turn over and self-right. Some of these lifeboats are fitted with external sprinkler systems and internal air supplies to protect the boat and its occupants from fire and toxic gases. In a real emergency, once the boat has stopped in a safe position, the EPIRB would be switched on, secured to the survival craft and put in the water. The SART, the radar transponder, would be mounted and switched on. Using the radio on board, the coxswain should help organize the gathering together of all the survival craft. Maintenance is essential to make sure that all the lifeboat systems are fully operational. The stores must also be checked and replaced in line with flag state requirements. Free fall boats are not lowered from davits but descend directly into the water. They are always boarded in the stowed position. An officer prepares the lifeboat for launching by first releasing the chocks that secure the boat in place. The battery charging wire is then disconnected. The officer enters the lifeboat and switches the boat's electrical system to battery power. 
the crew musters in the normal way. But they must enter the lifeboat in an organized way. Space is restricted inside, so some ships are provided with inflatable life jackets. You need to know and follow the procedures on your ship. The steep angle at which they are boarded makes it essential that boarding is carried out calmly. Personnel in the boat must be distributed evenly. On some ships, everyone has a seat allocated to them, so they enter in seat order, those nearer the bow of the lifeboat first. If individual seats are not allocated, then the lifeboat crew will direct people to their seats. Once in their seats, it is essential to strap in properly. You will need to make sure that you're using the right strap for your seat. Many of these lifeboats have head restraints that must be worn. Entering by seat order means that the coxswain, usually the ship's captain, will be one of the last men to enter. He then starts the engine, preheating it for 30 seconds before ignition. Right, is everyone secure? If the motor does not start for any reason, the lifeboat can still be used as its speed of descent will take it clear of the ship. The designated person has the task of bringing on board the SART and EPIRB. Sometimes this is the chief officer. Once everyone is on board, the door is shut.